podcast. What you are about to hear is Roland Moya read his affidavit word for word from what happened that night. We also have a conversation about what he felt about reading this document for the first time in over 20 years. On Friday night at approximately 6.30 p.m., my cousin Robert Espericueta, brother Alberto Libre Moya, and brother-in-law Antonio Salinas Jr. left Edinburgh to go fishing to South Padre Island. We arrived approximately at 9 p.m. and docked at the Sea Ranch Fishing Pier on the island. We put our 17-foot Glastron fishing boat on the bay, which is between South Padre Island and Port Isabel, and began to fish. We noticed that the causeway lights were three quarters off, with only one quarter of the lights were on. We also saw that the channel lights were on were not on. On Saturday at approximately 12:45 a.m., we noticed a barge that was traveling north and appeared to be a far distance. At 1:30 a.m., we were about 500 yards from the north side of the causeway when we heard a big bang and followed by a splash. We turned on spotlights to see what was happening and noticed a motor vehicle fall off the causeway into the water, the bay. We immediately threw our fishing equipment out of the boat and were raising our anchor when we saw another vehicle had fallen off the causeway. We also called 911 on my cellular phone. I couldn't understand the 911 mail operator, so I called three times in a row. We then observed approximately six to 10 vehicles falling off the causeway. We traveled to where the vehicles were falling, and during the travel time, we were waving flares at the vehicles that were approaching the area <clears throat> uh, where the vehicle had fallen. We had not seen the extent of the damage that, that the causeway had received until we got closer. We heard and saw the barge strike the causeway sideways and cause the causeway to sway. We slowed down and started looking for survivors. We noticed debris everywhere, including car parts floating on the water. We noticed vehicles that had fallen off the causeway, se- causeway semi afloat and were being carried off by the water current. At that point, we heard a female crying out for help. And with our spotlight, we, fa- we found her and carried her out of the water and put her in the boat. The female was yelling that she had made it and thinking, uh, thanking us for helping her. We then looked around and heard several voices, and we looked, we looked them and had a hard time finding them because of the debris. We then saw a male victim with trauma to his head. I later found out his name was Rene Manta. We got Manta in front of our boat and noticed another older male. Later, I found out his name was Gustavo in the water. Manta was telling us about his severe back pain, <clears throat> back pain and if we had found his female passenger named Robin. With Mata still holding onto our boat, we moved over to Gustavo, and Gustavo made it over the rear of the boat, and we helped him get on the boat. We saw a female who we believe was Robin and another unidentified person in the water in front of us. At that point, we pulled Mata on our boat and gave him a shirt for his, for- his head wound and covered him with a towel. We noticed two Coast Guard ships approach both sides of the causeway. I told my cousin Robert that we needed to get Mata to the Coast Guard ship because of his injuries. The Coast Guard men got there to the scene striking up cigarettes instead of having rescue equipment. They got closer and we told them about Mata's injuries and that there were people in the water. No one moved and they continued smoking and looking at the causeway. They then stated that they did not have spotlights and told us to take the victims to the other ship on the other side of the causeway. They wanted us to travel through the damaged area. The female survivor that we on our boat did not want to go through the area that was damaged. We started questioning the female and Gustavo about who was with them. Both female and Gustavo stated that they were alone. We traveled onto the other side of the bridge and met the other Coast Guard ship. The Coast Guard took the female and Gustavo off the ship and a Coast Guardsman named Chris jumped onto our boat and checked on Manta. About five minutes later, the Coast Guard told us that we were going to the Coast Guard station with Chris, so they put the female and Gustavo back on our boat. Before we left, we told the Coast Guard that we had seen two other persons out in the water. We arrived at the Coast Guard station and there was no EMS personnel there. We helped Gustavo off our boat and laid him on the dock. EMS arrived and treated Gustavo and Mata. The female walked over to a bench and sat down. EMS told, EMS told, advised us that the scene, that the causeway was damaged, they couldn't transport. So they put Gustavo back on our boat and back on a backboard, and Coast Guard told us to take him to the Port Isabel site. EMS told us to leave the victims there because, I guess I meant to say, we were not a rescue vessel, and we told them his people needed to go to the hospital. They took Gustavo and Mata off my boat, and EMS stayed with them. We then went back to the scene with Coast Guardsman Chris on our boat. Chris then jumped on the Coast Guard vessel. A Port Isabel fireman jumped into our boat 
and the fireman requested we would get closer to the scene because we had a smaller boat. We circled the area once, and the fireman received information that the electricity was off from the causeway and asked to take him back to the Coast Guard boat to get the divers. The divers jumped into the water and swam towards the accident scene, and we followed them to, with the spotlight. As we were making our way to the scene, we observed boats with Border Patrol and state troopers approaching. We signaled to them about the divers in the water. We then heard the Border Patrol say that the electricity was not off yet, and the firemen told the diver that it was their call to stay in the water. I heard one of the divers say that he had seen a deceased victim in the red truck and was pinned. The other two divers said they needed air tanks and the jaws of life equipment. All three divers <clears throat> climbed on our boat and headed to Port Isabel. We then docked our boat. We then spoke to a Port Isabel pastor in a short while. The three state troopers asked us about what had happened. We were also told to stick around because they needed us to speak to us. That's the end of the statement. So how does it feel reading this 20 years later? When was um, the last time that you saw this? I saw, uh, well, the last time I saw it was during the the mediation because um, I kind of wanted a copy of this. Um, and I think if you kind of look at the opening, they kind of just like, all right, this is the opening, and now they get to the, the thick of the story. Mm -hmm. But when I when Robert when you when you guys had found it, Robert had said, "Hey, I found the statement. You got to you got to read this." I got chills seeing my my initials because I was like, "Wow, this is this is probably the oldest piece of document that's out there, other than my social security card." You know, yeah. had my little kid signature on it uh, that has my signature on it. And then um, so I read it, and and at first though I was a little kind of disappointed because the parts of the story that I had wanted in it were not mentioned, which was. Um, uh, the 911 with the foreign accent. I do mention it, and I couldn't understand the guy. Uh, but then after when I when I read the whole story, I loved it because it just kind of just fit with Robert's part of the story yeah. before you guys even got the statements. Yeah. And I had said it then. Once you get the statements, you'll see that the story matches up. You know, uh, wasn't 100, percent but like it's like you said. You know, we're, we you read it, we go over it, we kind of visit, and you kind of remember these little things back and forth. But this is the heart of it. This is enough to say, yes, they did see this. Yes, yeah. they were there. And yes, they were a part of this. Um, that's the beauty about this podcast that 20 years from now that the story will forever live, whether I'm here or not. This, and then there'll be video, there'll be audio and, and, and this statement. Let me ask you this. Um, we got some backlash and uh, th this is not our intention to, to be able to pick up those scabs, right? Tell us about that. Tell us about what your thought process is about us telling this story. It, it's a part of the it's a part of the story that's never been told. And now people know that we were there, and people know that we saved some lives. Well, some people, but the the big part, the big chunk of it, the part that that I had mentioned, you didn't want you didn't want my version of it a year after because you would have had you know a young man here pounding his fist and how dare they and blah blah blah. But the heart of it is was that the the Coast Guard arriving and not assisting. The part where I mentioned clearly that the Border Patrol and the state troopers were just kind of in the way of of us helping these divers out because when in the when i mentioned that we were keeping an eye on the divers they swam from the boat on the surface of the water to the cars and we had to be yelling at them hey there's people in the water get your boat further away because the current was so strong and you could tell that some of these people were not experienced yeah uh, pilot uh boat drivers or whatever yeah. you call it i can't think of the terminology right now um so when I read that part, I, I, I had told the story, but I had never told that part because it was, it was not a, uh, an important factor. But it is now, 20 years later, because you have so many people saying, well, why weren't other people rescued? Why weren't um, victims taken out earlier? I mean, I think it was up to day three that they were still yeah. taking victims out. Um, so that was a real powerful part of reading the statement. And I told you that it's my signature. I mean, it's a little different now, but that's that's 20 years ago. I gave the statement to a to a, 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 a Texas Ranger. And then the part of, I guess, being in shock is when you guys, when I heard you guys mention um, that we had taken uh, some kind of sample. Yeah. Whether we had the alcohol. Toxology or, reports, yeah. yeah. And it came out negative, yeah. which, is, which, is, which is awesome. And, and Robert said it best, what fishing trip do you ever hear of that didn't have yeah. beer, beer on the boat? Yeah. Especially a night fishing trip. Yeah. <laughs> But I guess we it goes back to the whole thing that uh, we were being prepped we were being we were being prepared for what was about to happen and obviously alcohol in our system or if anyone was partaking in anything else would have really have, have hindered, hindered yeah it would yeah. have hindered our, our ability to respond to it uh, it's just it's so interesting how do you how do you feel about like everybody that's com complimenting on it or everybody that's commenting on this well how do you how do you take that 
it it's a great feeling because I had I had was really worried about um, any negative that could have come from it. And it's kind of hard to well, how do you how do you say anything negative about what some guys yeah. try to did try to do their best out there. Um, the reason I felt that way is because a part of me and a part of the guys, we feel that we could have done more. We really could have with what we little that we had. And and had mentioned it earlier, the fact that we made these visits away from the site because vis- going to the Coast Guard was away from the site. Going to the cross to the other part of the bridge where the other Coast Guard is at. Then we got the trip to their Coast Guard station, the trip back to Port Isabel, got off the boat, got on the boat, and then headed back to help the divers. That all that time, nothing was done, and it's not like we were in charge. I mean, no. you would you would think we were the ones in charge of it, and then time just froze until we got back to to tell these people what to do. That's really how it's really seemed to us. Because how how do you not already have that guy out of the car? How do no. you not have more victims um, rescued? Because they could. I, I honestly feel that they could have been rescued. There's no. I really feel there's no excuse that, that there was three days that these people had to be down there. And then the the horrible part is is showing these these video these uh, pictures to the family. That was just, just horrible. Yeah, they they showed it while you all were in court. While we were while we were in court, it was on, I was on the screen. I, was, I mean, there wasn't expensive LEDs and all that, so that somehow they projected it on, on on the screens, and it was just the the vehicle being pulled with the cranes that they had out there. And to this day, I have no idea why they even bothered to show that. But uh, you know, we had we had to deal with that, and, and we it was a lonely ride home because it was like, damn man, we really we really could have done more. We really could have done more. And then then that's when the anger sets in, and and the, the people that were trained, the people that should have been out there, uh, even the simple thing of of holding a spotlight on the divers, something so simple had to be done by us. Wow, you know there was, I can't believe there wasn't an, an, another vessel out there that could have assisted the divers like that. They literally had to wait for us uh, to get there. Let me take you back to to when the, the vehicle started falling in. You, Robert, was saying, "No way, I'm, we're, I'm taking you guys out of here." Yeah. What was going through your head at that time that you wanted to go? Well, after the bang. And, and and us, I remember we were listening to, to the Q94.5 at the time. His boat had a thing. We kind of lowered it. And, you know, Robert had a spot line, the water and all that. We didn't know that the bridge was completely out. We just figured there was an auto accident and the car went over the, 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 bear, the railing. So going out, I mean, I, I didn't even think we cut the anchor. I know we were pulling in. I think we ended up cutting it because the anchor was not on board. And um, Robert was, you know... Sincere, he was no bullshitting. He's like, I, I, Yeah, right, we're not going to do this. And and something this divine intervention, man, something just took over. And it, it was it was adrenaline pumping, but there was this calmness to reassure everyone, um, This is what we, we got to do. This we got to get in there, we got to save these people's lives. And I clearly remember telling Robert, There could be kids out there. And that's such a big thing because at the time I wasn't a father, uh, Robert was, and so was my brother. But I, the the love for a child, I, I had no idea what that was. But that was the one thing that I can remember just thinking there could be kids. Not that the value of a life of, of anyone is weighed by their age, but that was such a big thing for me to to mention. And and I Robert, the council was in, in the center, and I remember just grabbing his head and kissing him, like thanking him, like, thank you, let's do this, let's go in there. I had gone to uh, that magnet school, uh, South Texas High School for Health Professions, Med High, and had the very little of of first aid training mm-hmm. that they give you there and that's even when I paid attention in class <laughs> but i had this this game plan and and part of the game plan was we got to we got to make room so all the fishing all the, i mean we didn't even reel up our lines i'm talking just throw them out brand new brand new nice pen reels we just threw them overboard um, the ice chests that were not stationary because we had taken some with us for the fish that we, mm-hmm. we didn't even catch. We, we, yeah, to call, they need to change the story, not fishermen. You guys just say a bunch of guys that were out there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big title to give us a boat fisherman. Guys. T- yeah, boat, boat, some boat guys, <laughs> some boat enthusiasts. Um, yeah, we, we we cleared the boat of anything that was not going that was not screwed down, with the exception of the padding because we knew that we were going to be putting people and and there's an eerie feeling of when that was happening because I remember clearly knowing and telling them, guys, we're going to see some bodies. We're going we're gonna, to, some, some of these people could not have made it. And, and I, I think back, you know, um, I wasn't, I have no medical training. I haven't, I've never been in, in the military. I, I've never had anything happen to prepare me 
for this calmness that came over me that night and and just get things going and everyone was everyone was on board man everyone just started throwing things off clearing the clearing the way i think the one bag that we kept but only because it had some clothes and some towels was which we used later on the end that was mm-hmm. a blessing that we didn't even throw that over that stayed on board because that we had to stop his bleeding we had to you know cover his head um it, it played out i remember that so clearly i remember I was wearing uh, uh flip-flops too that that day so i think i just tossed those and i ended up having to get some someone bring me some shoes because it was just like if it wasn't gonna help us it was off the boat yeah. it was completely off the boat uh, it was pretty pretty it's a it, it's you know we share the story and even I, I think people s- still don't feel the the huge impact that it had witnessing it smelling it the 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 the, the water splashing on us every little bit of it uh you know us being burnt robert had no idea that his his uh, swim trunks were melted to his skin until the ems pointed it out so the adrenaline for us was just raging wow it's it's a just this like i keep saying that this this story has so much depth and uh like i said we we're trying to get a hold of uh people that were in it people that were on the boats helping people that night i mean anybody even the survivors and we understand that that it might not be time for them to share this yet but when it is we have a just open invitation please reach out to us and uh i I think if you if you were to get any of the survivors i think the best way uh, the respectful way to approach it is just how are they doing today there's no need to share the story. We've shared what we did, what happened, and uh, they, don't get me wrong. If they want to, what they want to share that part of the story, to be great because I, 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 we never knew exactly what they were thinking when the cars were falling. We never had that conversation, and it wasn't out of. Uh, I mean, I say respect, wasn't out of respect for the for her. It was just when we finally got together, we were like a like a family unit. You know, we all experienced something together. Theirs was more horrific than ours. More horrific. There, I can't imagine what they went through. Um, it was just this mutual respect of just, and even getting a thanks from them was a little weird. It was just like, no, this is something that needed to be done, and we did it. We were fortunate enough to to do it. Um, but if they were to come on, it, what are you up to today? You know, what what amazing things have you you've done? Uh, what hardships have you accomplished? Um, you know, God had a plan for you. What was that plan at, yeah. at the end of it? And and and, and something that didn't, didn't, we haven't even mentioned. Gustavo's wife was like three, four months pregnant at the time. Oh wow! Yeah, so he he would have left a, a child without a father had he had passed. Wow! And um, you, that that's a story we got to hear later. Um, but uh, everyone every, they have their story, and there's no need to bring up the tragedy. We already yeah. got that. We got that covered. If they want to mention, that's fine. But where are you today? What, yeah. What's going on? That'd be awesome. That that yeah, because the story has the the human element, the the real life human element. You're a real person, and we talked about there that Robert's a real person. Yeah. Everybody is a real person, and tragedy happened. Yeah, and then the thing that sucks about it is life still goes on. So we still got to get back up. And yeah, yeah, go and I do mean, what we have to do. Th- think about it this way: um, their experience crossing that bridge now is way more intense than anything that me and Robert would feel. Yeah, uh, the family members that, that lost people, that, that, what are they, what are they experiencing? I can't even imagine what that would what that would feel like, what that would be like. You know, um, there's there's parts. Uh, I went to San Antonio about I don't know, it's probably been like three, four years now, maybe even longer. Um, and I lost my father in San Antonio. There's roads that my mom will not go down wow. because she remembers a, a conversation she had with my father, or so, and, and some of them may not even be negative conversations. They may even be positive. It's, it's, it, she suffers from her own post traumatic stress of losing my father. And so w- when I started to see that, I, and then and, and the podcast came out, and I was thinking how exciting it would be to have them on, and it makes sense yeah. that they would not want to come on they were not uh they're not ready to come on 20 years is a long time yeah uh we were ready uh we weren't ready 10 years ago we yeah. weren't ready five years ago we definitely weren't ready a year later and that's why the story was just put away it was just just quieted um it'd be it'd be really great that'd be that'd be a huge gift for us because yeah uh, uh, hearing hearing where are you today? How, how what's going on? How's your son? Or I think he had a son, uh, Bridget. I don't even know if she ever had children. And 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 um, Rene, what's Rene up to? You know. Yeah. Sorry, I never sent you a happy birthday on Facebook when we were Facebook friends. But you know, it, it, even that's that even that's a powerful message that we became Facebook friends and really never spoke, really never talked to each other about it. And uh, he would get tagged on the anniversary 
uh, ceremony and I hate to see it. And I would get like, oh man, I don't think, I don't think he wants to see this. Yeah. Uh, and maybe he's just not ready. Maybe, uh, maybe they need longer. And, and, and my mom's been uh, going through this for two years now. I miss the old man. Uh, she may never be ready to go down those roads. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Because even my mom was, was called me the other day and she, we were talking about that, that maybe they're just not ready to tell their side of the story yet because she's lost her brother, my uncle. And how would I like, or how would she like it if somebody was telling a story about what happened to him? Right. And, and that's the beauty about it is that we're just giving our version and, and including the names only because that that's the person I, I would, it'd be disrespectful not to, to label them person A, person B, person C. Um, we've not shared any of the emotions that they had that day. Uh, we shared some of the, the pain that they were going through, but their backstory out of respect for them, all of us are, are without even, without even discussing it. I just taking that part of the story. And if we get to, if we keep it for the rest of our lives, well then that's just the gift that we've given to them and vice versa yeah. that the rest of the story paul, paul harvey there yeah. um uh, is for ours it's for us to keep and respect for them yeah. well that being said guys uh we'd like to thank you all very much for tuning in roland anything else you want to say before we finish this off i just want to thank you again really i just really want to thank you for what you're doing this is this is awesome there's and there's no better way to do this and i had mentioned this earlier uh i took a road trip to vegas and uh i, I popped on the podcast and i had listened to it already several times but when you listen to it uh it's it's it, you know and i had I had it on the speaker so everyone could hear in the car uh i heard the comment saying man it's like a movie it's it's like a movie you're you're watching and and you have it broken up perfectly with it's like a series and yeah. and then uh they had mentioned when you had to go spot on it's great because y you 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 know what's happening you know what's going to happen and now you got like a little flashback of of, of a spot and, and what he went through and that was all new, that was all new to me and, and everything I've, I've yet to listen to to jp's um uh, because we, jp just didn't exist in our world because yeah. it was part of the story that got hidden part of the story that was put away and, and and the guy's a hero you know anyone anyone that was out there that night it was, it was a huge hero because of what of what they did those those are heroes because they they were trained to do that and they rushed out there and they did it and and the fact that, and it's in my statement, the fact that they waited for us, they had to wait for us to get them closer, to protect them with the spotlight from being run over by other vehicles, by other boats. Um, that's that's sad, but at the same part, imagine the eagerness of them to get in there for those 30, 40 yeah. hours that we were gone. The eagerness for them to jump in the water. And that's what they did. Once they found out that we were willing to take them and guide them, that's what they did. They, they, they jumped in. Those guys, I don't know any of their names, but those guys... Uh, those guys are the heroes. You know? Yeah, there's a lot of unsung heroes in this in this story, and uh, we're, we're starting to see them come out weekly. And um, I encourage you, even if you don't feel like you're a hero or you have something just to share with us, call us, uh, send us a message. We'd love to get your side, your perspective of what happened tonight, because we are telling the true story of the Queen Isabella Causeway collapse. With that being said, guys, we'll see you all later. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>